What's going on, guys? My name is Rio Nixiel. And it's your boy, B87. Today, we're here to do a review for the movie King Arthur, Legend of the Sword. There's the king. Now, this movie is about King Arthur. Of course, well, this is before he becomes King Arthur. This is how he becomes it. And, of course, in the first part of the movie, you see how the sword was formed in the movie, how it was forged and stuff like that and why it was made. And then, of course, um, as time moves on, you see how um, King Arthur's father had the sword first, and he dies in the movie fighting some type of ghost. Or yes, whatever, it's like a vapor yeah, like thing, a, like, a, like a ghost vapor thing. And as the movie moves on, you see King Arthur grow up and have to fend for himself. And he meets friends and he gets saved He's by. He apparently grows up in a brothel. He's sent down river Moses style. When his father's killed, he sends them all and he had to run away. He's picked up by a woman in a brothel, raised there, and learns to defend them and fight for them and all that. And that becomes his family. Yeah, and, and of course, as the movie moves on, he finds out that he is the. So called, uh, reluctantly, the, well, luckily, the next heir to be king, of course, you know, the uncle has been controlling everything throughout the years, of course. And, uh, of course, then after that, he finally accepts the sword as the movie moves on. He finally accepts the sword, but he still is kind of reluctant. He kind of doesn't really want he to, doesn't want really, it. he doesn't really want it, of course, because he's like, he's so used to the, to the simple life. That's Vortigern? how I look at it. Vortigern, who's played by, uh, Jude Law, right? He, uh, kind of. Hounds him. He forces him to be t- pick up the mantle of king because yeah. he won't leave him alone. If he leaving left alone, he would have gone back to his brothel or back to his old life and just yeah. been just fine. Right. But because he kept hounding him, fighting him, trying to kill him, kill his friends, he just he decided to have to join the resistance movement and fight back. And with the sword in hand, he was able. He had massive power. Was able to do whatever. Mm-hmm. Which he wanted. was really cool. In the movie It was really was. cool. And then of course at the I want to say well at the very end he finally accepts the sword, kills his uncle, he finally becomes king, and he knights all the he, you know he they get this table. Everybody's like, what's this? What's that? It was real funny. It was really like, there. what is that? And this this is gonna be the night of the round table. Of course he has everybody kneel and mm-hmm. he kneels everybody at the table, and uh, that's pretty much it for the for the whole movie. It was really great. I loved it personally. But where you next? Why don't you tell me what was your rating for this movie? I have to say, I was stuck between a 7 and an 8. And ultimately, I think I'm going to give it an 8 overall. Wow, really? Yes, an 8 overall. As you know, 7 is my average movie. Anything below 7 is below average, and I don't, didn't really right. enjoy it. 7 is average. I guess, that's my standard for all yeah. movies, unless they go do good or do bad. Who? So I'm giving this movie an 8 because it's a retelling of the uh, Ar- King Arthur story. We all, well, probably most people don't know the real right. legend and all that stuff, but each, each movie claims to be the real legend of the sword. Right. The real legend of King Arthur himself. Some are way after he's already become king, and he's like on his deathbed, and you have uh, Lancelot and all that right. stuff, and Guinevere. This one's like prequel time. It tells yeah. before how he became King Arthur in the first place. Lady in the Lake giving him the sword, and it's an interesting retelling. It's a very modern retelling, and and I appreciated that. All, but I also wasn't too much of a fan of that because I like the old stories. I like. Right. I like the I medieval feel. It was, it, was, it, was very, it was very modern to you. That's what you kept telling me. Yeah, very, so everyone keeps saying that. It was very modern. Well, I mean, because you think this time, 1200 BC, 1200 AD, whether it's 12th century, is supposed to be medieval. Yeah. Sires and lords and all that stuff. But they're almost like gangsters ro- hustling and doing stuff in the streets. And they're, uh, It had a very feel to it. Guy Ritchie is known for, der- is yeah. not known, but one of the ones he's well known for is Sherlock, the Sherlock movies. And in right. that movie, they have a lot of like, similar style of things to yeah, this movie, I, like the I, old. I, I, I see what you're saying. They, in order to pass time, they telling what was going on while they're showing scenes of what's going on while they're talking about it. It's like you're gonna go up and say this thing while they're actually saying this thing on the screen, and it's really it weird. Was... And it progresses fastly. I like it like that, but at the same time, it doesn't hold to the original feel of King Arthur, the medieval feel you want. I am actually going to agree with us. Uh, I'm okay. actually going to agree with you on that. I kind of feel the same, which is why I'm giving it a. I know he hates this. I'm actually giving it a eight point nine. Eight point nine. Eight point nine. Eight oh, could have had a nine, but I agree with that. Was one of the things that I did not like about the movie was the part where they kind of just, just like you said they pause, just like the whole show like I understand. You didn't like that? I liked it as a past thing. I liked that. But that's that's, that's the like thing it. though. It was it was like they were trying to force it to be funny. Like, for some reason. I feel like it was forced to be funny. That's part of that the modernization of, yeah, things are trying to was, make it relatable. And I think that's what it was. But that's one of the things I did not like about the movie. But overall, the movie itself was great. Because I, Sean, Rhea Nixon knows, 
I am not a medieval guy. I hate medieval movies. Mm-hmm. But this one, for some reason, was great. I love yeah, the I way so he had the sword. Was played by uh, Charlie Hoonme, who was actually in uh, what's the, what's that show? Uh, something with bikes on it. I'm a Sons of Anarchy. Sounds like yes, he was in Sons of oh, Anarchy. Okay. I didn't know that. He was in that. He was in that one. So that was it. Was really good. I loved. It. I loved how he had the sword. He was able to fight and like, everything pauses. He's like, what's going on? One thing I did not like <laughs> though. The well, I did. The CGI effects were amazing. The magic, they actually did have mages in here. Magic, yeah. the one mage, the female who helped him was Astrid uh, Burgess. Yeah, she had no name in the movie, she was just the mage. Yeah. But the magic they used, controlling animals, the eye of him effects, the fire, the uh, Reaper dude he was talking about yeah. had a cape of fire that was just amazing. I love the uh, shimmery effect it had. The one part they failed in the CGI was when King Arthur held both hands on the sword and time slowed down and he was fighting. He looked rubbery. He looked obviously CGI. I didn't like it. <laughs> Sean just is a big medieval thing. So and they when he swung, he broke the swords, which was cool. And explosions, but he was all rubbery. Yeah, yeah, Sean. Sean hate like Sean loves medieval stuff, but I think that's why I liked it because it was very. I, I loved it. I loved it. He hated it. He was like, oh my god. Well, I don't think he hated it, but he just didn't like it that much. Like, he was just fun. Yeah. But other than that, um. One last final thing I want to say about it. Yeah. I love the music. The music was really good for this one. It had both modern aesthetics as well you as it had medieval Celtic agree. themes I to it as well. I definitely agree with that. I, really, I would say the same thing. I would say the same thing about that. The music was... I don't really like... They had rock parts happening sometimes when the Howard parts going on. In the beginning, they had Celtic yeah. things when it was all sad and all. Yeah. It was I, just a really good. Yeah, I love I the def- music. I definitely agree with you on that. I, I never think of it like that. The music was great. But other than that, is there anything else you guys say? I'd like to thank y'all for watching this episode. Please go ahead and leave us a subscribe if you enjoyed it. A li- leave a like below and, and a comment a, below. And a share. Please share. Please share. Please share. Uh, and other um, people enjoy it as well. And also a special announcement. An amazement is coming real soon. So hopefully you get to, if you do go, go see, go, go check it out. Go come see us. We'll have cards and hopefully we'll be filming. So <laughs> I'm going to be dressed as no face. If you see a giant eight foot tall or seven foot tall yeah. no face walking around, that's going to be me. I'm actually going to have an Instagram. I'm actually going to post a, a little Instagram. picture and I want y'all to guess who I'm going to be. If you see my top five, that's the best uh, information or the best you know clue I can give you. So check out my top five, see which top five character you think I'm going to be. Um, other than that, we do apologize for scheduling. We are going to try to schedule better for movie reviews and trailers so then you know what we're doing. This movie is coming out, this film is coming quite a little bit later than the movie actually exactly. came out, isn't it? All right. So, well, other than that, I have nothing to say. It's your boy from Beano87. My name is Rian Nixio. And we see you in the next review or game or whatever you see. Whatever we do. I'll catch you later. One. Bye.